Elevated Greats Podcast. Elevated Greats Podcast. With your host, Seth. Your host, Seth. And stylist, oh yeah, Rashid Bindra. It's time to get started. Let's talk fashion, shall we? I am your co-host and stylist, Rashid Bindra. So as you can see, there's no additional guest because the guest of honor today is going to be none other than Rashi Bindra. <laughs> Are you really doing this? <laughs> we're totally doing this. We're totally, we're totally exploiting the uh, situation right now. So the really interesting thing is that Rashi was working on a project uh, for about the last oh, I don't know, about three months now, I would say, uh, which was quite hush for a large part of it, even to me. Um, just because there was, I guess, a lot of different moving parts, and I only heard about it not too long ago when I was asked to be a little, part, a small part of it, which was exciting for me. Um, and we'll get into that briefly, but more so, we want to talk about Rashi's journey in building her very own fashion magazine. And this specific magazine <laughs> actually highlights uh, Canada and Canadian fashion. So, so an interesting angle. Yeah. It's an online publication. Um, that's all I'm going to say about it, Rashi. I'm going to let you sort of <laughs> walk in from here and tell us a little bit more about the the concept of the magazine and, and how it came about. Um, okay, so this is still hitting me, so it's going to take me a little bit of time to gather my thoughts, everybody. Um, before the record, sorry, before you start, Rashi, just so that our, our listeners know, it just launched this week, like yesterday. Yes. Yeah, okay, yes. perfect. So it, ju- it just launched on Monday of this week, so <laughs> we're getting like the fresh goods right now. <laughs> yes. Um, Okay, so where do I start? Um, since I was a kid, I loved fashion magazines. Like, I would save my allowance, go get magazines, and I loved it. And I always thought of having my own magazine one day. Like, that was, but that was like a dream, like, you know, one day dream, whatever. And then COVID happened. And during COVID, one of the things was I was listening to all the people that I knew in my network. And at some point we all were having that same conversation was that, you know, our roles are so diverse, like we do so many things and we usually are those, like I I like to call all the stylists, all the hair and makeup, um, all the photographers. um, We are the bridge that brings that vision to life. But during COVID, it's really like in, in, in the industry minus the you know retailers which 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 we have spoken about and the fashion houses even we got hit pretty bad and it wasn't even that like a lot of people were just like i want to create i want to voice my opinion out i want to share and there's only so much you can share on social media and then also the other thing that was also playing in my mind is that you know in canada like i find that there's so much talent it's like crazy talent here but we're, we're not recognized as much, but you'll talk about people in the States and we go data over them. Um, yes, it's a different market, it's a different playing field, but that does not mean that the talent isn't there either, right? Um, so I don't know, I, when I was thinking about like what to do, it, I was just like, maybe I'll do my main scene now. And I was like, so this, this idea came about in March. And the one thing that was very important to me is that I highlight the people that deserve to be highlighted in the sense like all the like all the back end stuff. So that's why I call it behind the lens because it's really the people who make everything happen. Um, and I was a chicken for like half of the March when I came up with that idea. <laughs> I was too scared to get moving on it. Um, but yeah, and then I just started and we were like three main people who made this happen, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> And yeah, here we are. We finally launched it. And so far, the response has been overwhelmingly great. Like, I still feel a little bit emotional about it. It's still hitting me. It's still process happening. It's also a passion project, like you mentioned. It's something that you've been thinking about for quite some time and really haven't even had the opportunity to jump into. And as we've talked about in numerous different shows, you know, a lot of time right now during COVID and during uh, self-isolation for people has been, you know, passion projects and things they've wanted to work on, haven't had the chance to. And it was almost like the, the timings just aligned because it, the industry itself had so much to talk about. And so as, mm-hmm. uh, as I understand, when you're approaching people to write pieces or to collaborate with, you know, there's amazing content 
that spoke to so many people, both in, in the industry and outside of the industry? Yes. Yeah. Um, so funny thing is, like, I would just approach people that I know and I would just tell them, this is the concept of it. This is how I'm doing it. And they were just like, yes, I'd love to be part of it. They, there was not even a second of hesitation, which I was like, okay. And I got like that little like butterfly feeling. Like I'm like, mm. holy shit, did this person just say yes? Did this supermodel just tell me yes? Like what's going on here? You know? <laughs> so um, let's talk about the name a little bit. So we'll talk, the name is called The Walkthrough, correct? Yes. So, it's called the walkthrough behind the lens of 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 Canadian fashion. That's right. essentially the full name. Yeah, no, I, I knew the name. I just wanted to make sure that you confirmed it. So, so my question to you is: first, from a starting standpoint, where, where did the name come from? How how did you choose a name for the magazine? Um, I was watching an Anna Winter documentary. Um, so just an FYI, if most of you guys don't know this already, my my inspirations and what I aspire to in terms of every work I do in fashion comes from Vogue, comes from Bazaar, and comes from Business of Fashion. Like those three have been like, I've been heavily influenced by them. By, by them. So I was watching, um, it was like a, like a documentary or like a, or like a behind the scenes um, of, of, of Anna Winter and she was doing a photo shoot. And what she was doing was she was prepping for that photo shoot before it actually happened. And the way she was explaining how that was happening, that's essentially, it's kind of like behind the lens. So, and it's called, and in true fashion terms, it's called, it's called a, a, a walkthrough. So I was like, that's exactly what my mind seems going to be because it's really the before the, the, it's, it's all, of, it's all the before that happens before the image is out there, right? Or the main thing. Right. So that's how that came about. <laughs> so, so now let's talk about the concept. I mean, obviously you're, you're a stylist that's primarily focused in Canada. You have some roots outside of Canada and in, in certain parts of the States too. But so what was the main focus on, on building it as a Canadian designer or showcasing Canadian talent? What, what was the thought process behind that? Well, I mean, you know what? I was just like, how come we don't have a Vogue Canada? That was my first thought. Like, I'm like, there's Vogue Greece, there's Vogue there's Vogue Arabia. There's there's like the randomest Vogue like like you can think of. And I'm like, why is, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, there's all of that, and then I'm like, why is Canada missing from it? Like, why like aren't we good enough? So that was like one of the thought process, and then the other was, holy crap, it's COVID. If I like now, I have to think of even as a stylist, if I want to build, I can't go to the States right now and build. I cannot go to Europe and build, like, which was, you know, even what I was thinking about, you know, like a, like, like a few months ago. I'm like, I should tap into opportunities in Canada, not just the city I'm in. And that kind of made me wonder, I'm like, if I'm thinking like this, I'm 100% sure there are many, many talented, you know, um, artists thinking the exact same thing. So I'm like, why don't we just create a space where people know of each other? Like, why not? Something wrong in that. And that's, I think that's kind of like started the whole, like this has to be focused on Canada. I mean, I do have a global section in the main scene, but it's not heavily uh, focused on like global trends and stuff. It might be issues that are happening, um, but not necessarily like, you know, the Gucci fashion show type thing. Like that's not what the main scene is about. Well, you want, to, you want to highlight Canadian talent, as you mentioned, and whether, you know, the Canadian talent has ties to whether it's U.S. or Europe or, you know, yeah. any part of the world, obviously that'll come out in, in their conversations or their, their pieces that are written. Mm-hmm. But, but, I mean, primarily you're looking to highlight Canadian talent and the exposure that the Canadian talent has around the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, the, that's the whole idea of it. Like, we, we are as good as our as our neighbors you know in in the states we are we i truly truly believe that we just don't maybe have that same aggressiveness or that same thought process of working to that level so we always leave here and we go there um and there's obviously other factors in play but that does not mean that we should be like oh okay because we've never done this or we don't think like that we'll just wait you know until we can cross 
across the um, border. So I don't know. I, I just I just became very passionate about that, and I was like, I'm just gonna start this and see it how it goes. So you you made an an, an important point there with respect to the current timing. You know, the, one of the the original or the thought process was okay. Well, I can't necessarily go to connect with people in the states or in Europe or whatever the case at this stage to to mm-hmm. build. Um, so, you know, I'm going to start local. But some of your talent uh, in terms of the, the models and all those sort of things are not, are, not, are not local. So how did you coordinate, especially, I mean, d- doing a digital publication is one thing, but coordinating people to actually get shoots done and to get the type of shots you want done and, and the models and the looks you want done. Like, how did you guys go through that process with you and your team? Uh... <laughs> Call lots of coffee and no sleep. Yeah, I feel like I feel like this is a, a long-winded <laughs> answer over here, but that's okay. This is what's important. Um, so I actually did not. I personally did not want to do shoots for the main thing where my name was on it. I've done one out of the five shoots that we have. Um, I reached out to. When you say done, you mean styled and or yeah. the director or like yeah, styled and directed it. Um during COVID, which we made sure it wasn't a FaceTime shoot, just for the record, because I do get a little irked by that. It wasn't a FaceTime shoot, but it was a virtual shoot. Everybody was safe. We had masks in hand, like gloves and everything. So it was all good there. Um, And we were being socially distant. Um, I reached out to certain... So what I started doing was, one, there are certain photographers whose style I love, and I know. And then there were photographers that I actually didn't know. And I was on Instagram finding them. And then I just reached out and I spoke to them. I'm like, this is my vision. Can you do a shoot? Or can you do this? Or can we use this and that? And I started the conversation. And I just explained them. This is what I'm trying to do. And a lot of them loved it. Um, and they're like, yeah, okay. I'm going to send you this. I'm going to send you that. And Literally, that's how it kind of started working out. And same thing with the with the articles. What a lot of people may be surprised to see that there there are we have nine articles in this magazine. Um, a lot of online publications are very image based, and they're very just like photographers can like submit. That was the one thing I did not want to have in this. I um, I realized that there's there's a lot that people do want to say, and that is a niche market. That is a market of people who want to read that information. They and they want to use it, but I think we've somehow convinced ourselves that people don't read anymore, which is not true. Which is why you still have certain magazines, you know, circulating. Um, so I wanted to make sure that even the the type of articles that were written had relevance of what was happening. In, in, in the current times, but it was also light enough to be, um, to be inspiring, you know? So. so one of the things, and I think this is a, a true fact for sort of anyone starting up any sort of entrepreneurial type of venture, is the idea of reaching out to people you don't know and you may have, you know, thought of in the past or you know, in, in your mind, be like, I would like to work with this person or this entity at, at one point. What was that experience like? And did you get any no's or rejections? And how did you deal with that if you did? Um, I wouldn't call, I, I, I got one, no, I, I did that a couple, but they weren't exactly rejections. They were just like, we can't meet the timelines that you want, but I would like to be involved in the next issue. So could you reach out to me for the next issue or I'm going to keep that in mind now. Did you take that as a brush off or did you take it as a genuine, okay, these guys want to get involved. It's just now is not the right time. I did not take it as a brush off because the conversation was quite lengthy. Like they wanted to know the idea, the concept, you know, why I'm doing it and things like that. Um, And I mean, if, if they just said it because they wanted the brush off, that's also totally fine because I was prepared to actually get a lot of rejections. It's a brand new magazine. There's no social media following. Um, there's no presence like bigger brands or or bigger magazines, right? Uh, this is something that's, that's truly starting from scratch. So I was actually, um, I was not prepared to get the responses that I was getting. And it came to a point that I had to tell uh, a couple of them that, you know what, I'm going to have to put you for the next issue. Like, there was this amazing photographer. 
she's like, I can do a shoot just for you and give it. But the, the timeline just wasn't making sense for us. So I was like, I would love to have you for our next issue type of thing. Um, and then in terms of how that feels, like, yeah, it's kind of scary. But I think when, I think when you're confident about your vision and you're clear and you're passionate about it, you just kind of know and you just like approach them and you have that. And I think, I think if you let go of that fear of being rejection attitude and you're just like, okay, if not this person, that, and you, and you keep in mind the reality of the situation, it, it, it's not so bad actually. I think part of it is also like the passion, the passion you mentioned, right? Like if this is something you really wanted to have happen. So it's like, well, one way or the other, I'm going to get the content I want. I'm going to get the type of articles I want. I'm going to get the type of shots I want. If it's not this photographer, that model, or this, you know, writer or whatever the case, I'm going to have, I'm going to find someone to do it. Yeah, exactly. And I think you also don't hesitate to reach out to certain people that you think will be a fit. Like, you know, let's take you, for example, you're part of it. You had no idea what I was doing. And you're just like, okay, and you just sent it. Like you didn't um, hesitate, right? right? I just, I think I briefly explained to you what I was doing. And you're just like, when do you need this for? <laughs> was literally your response. Yeah, well, I mean, like our, our, relationship, we, our relationship was very different. Like if you asked me to do it, regardless of whatever the concept was, I would have done it. So so it, asking me is very different than asking someone over, an, you know, Instagram reach out that you may have an Instagram connection with, but not a full relationship. Um, you know, now, now, that you, now that you bring that up, um, one, of our, one of our articles, um, which was um, footwear times black black lives movement. So we so so we do have a piece on that, and we and we highlight amazing um, footwear brands from from black um, business owners right. and um, designers. And it was by Kieran, who happens to be you know this international model who I worked with uh, in in New York. And I just reached out to her like I, like I was seeing her post. We like follow each other. Uh, I, I reached out to her, I told her, and she's like, oh my God, yes, I would love to write for you. And I want to do this and that. And I was just like, holy shit. I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, there were like a lot of people who were just like, yes, I'll do it. When do you need this for? What do you need exactly? Just tell me. And I was like, wow. Did they actually, did they actually sing it like that to you? Like you just sang it? No, I, I'm probably just still like, Okay, you know. okay. So there's a bit of paraphrasing going <laughs> on here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they signed it on Instagram. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so th- that was really interesting because it, it's like you reached out to someone again just based on a on a Instagram connection and mm-hmm. and won them over in terms of their concept and the story. So, so what was I? I mean, this may be hard to sort of position because every, I'm sure every conversation was different. But again, for the benefit of our listeners, if anyone's thinking about you know this sort of concept of doing something similar. Mm-hmm. What was your pitch? What was your pitch to someone you didn't know? Like, what, why, why work with you? What, what was their, what was the catch or the hook? <laughs> That's just a very good question. I'm still trying to figure that answer out. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. And you know that when somebody says yes to me, I actually squeal. I'm like, holy shit, they said yes. <laughs> yes, I mean, for you, small, small wins are, are huge too, which is amazing because you celebrate the small wins, which is important. But also, I mean, I know you as a, as a, a go-getter and someone who's going to persevere like you don't take no for an answer um, and I guess that's what I'm trying to get at like what what sort of things did what sort of conversations were you having like were there some challenges along the way where you had to spend you know maybe more time on the conversations yeah. have, getting them on board versus the actual work and and what do those conversations look like um so so my pitch was really just me and just me being upfront about what I'm doing and I would just be like hi, um, uh, this is who I am. So I would explain that I am a stylist and, I, and I've done, you know, so-and-so type of work and I'm, and I'm launching this and this is my concept and I love your work I would, and I want to know if, if, you, if you'd like to be part of it and if I could give you more like details. And a lot of them, I think, um, I think some of them went to my profile and first checked me out mm-hmm, before saying yes to them. Um, which is also totally fine. I'm actually glad that they that they did that. Um, then I did have a couple of people who um, wanted to know more details, like why should they be part of a first issue that doesn't have any 
following, following what's an expected yeah. reach. Uh, exactly. And, and, you know, any backing and things like that. So those were the tougher questions because, again, these were people that were, I literally was just cold, like cold calling in the sense, like just reaching out on Instagram mm-hmm. through their, you know, hashtags and profiles that I found and whose work I felt was like, like it, it was good. It, it was good work. It, it spoke to you. It spoke highlighted. To you. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and, and I was like, this is so much talent. Like I would love to even get to like know these people, you know? Um, and yeah. And I think that was like some of the difficult conversations, but I, I guess they said, yes, I must have convinced them somehow. Um, I think it goes back to the whole point is like, how about being passionate about what you're doing at the end? Well, I think you hit some, some key points there, right? Like, you know, types of conversations you're going to have, like, why you, like, why, so if someone's thinking about doing this or a or, or project, why should the, the person invest their time, their energy, their talent in, in you? What sort of reach are you going to provide them with? What are you going to, like, what are you giving back to them? Like, why, why would they be spending their time doing this versus working on their own project or working on a project with someone else? Yeah. You know, what's the value, I guess, I guess in it for them. And then obviously your credit, your credibility and credentials. I mean, your, your, own personal work before you went and started the magazine and asked other people for work goes a long way. Your, your Instagram profile at, at the minimum, just as a, as a starting point, it speaks a lot to your work and there's a lot of content on there that if someone went on and said, okay, you know what? I get it. I get what she's about. I get that she has a skill. I get that she's the talent. She'd be someone cool to work with. Just like you found in their profiles, right? Like you found their work yeah. and you're like, you know what? I like them. I like their style. I like the way they do things. I like their, their end result. I want to create something with them. So, so I think that you hit some very important points for anybody that's thinking about this and thinking, okay, like what, you know, what, what sort of, sort of thing should I think about if I'm approaching other people to work with me on, on a collaborative basis on, on any type of uh, project, whether it's a magazine or a podcast or a, a styling session or, you know, a, a fashion show or whatever the case. I mean, there's got to be something in it for that person and the value that they see in, in working with you. You know, I, I think you you hit something that's very important is seeing the value right and um i i will say is that you have to be really authentic and i and i know this is a buzzword that's used now over and over again but i actually mean it when i say like you have to be really really real about who you are and what you're doing and most importantly why you're doing it because at some point that why of Mm -hmm. what you want to do it does come out in your sales pitch. It does come out when you're explaining your concept. And if you don't have a clear why, and most importantly, if you don't believe in your own why and your own self, they're not going to believe in it either. So I think what worked out for me in this case was I believed in this idea so much, even though, and I will say this, I've never done a layout. I have no graphic design skills. I had to figure this out entirely. I don't know half the lingo yet. You know what I mean? But I believed in the idea that there is so much out there that people should know. And I didn't have that fear of like, oh, but I'm a stylist. I'm getting like another mm-hmm. stylist. And like none of that stuff. I was just like, your work's freaking awesome. How can I work with you? And when you put that ego aside, like it just, it just happens. Like literally what you want, that shit just flows. I'll be honest with you. So I should mm-hmm. not wear this hat and talk. <laughs> Why are you saying you can't take you seriously? <laughs> I can't take myself seriously right now. <laughs> so okay, I'm wearing, I'm wearing the rapper's hat. So I have my sequence hat for like those who are just listening. I have this. <laughs> I do. I do have a rose gold sequence hat, and I'm wearing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. I don't think any, anybody who's watched our show before has definitely seen it. It's not the first time you worn it. <laughs> that was <also> true. <laughs> it's one of your go-to's. It's one of your favorites. <laughs> yes. Um, sorry, you were saying something. No, no, like I, I was just like, I'm sorry, I, I want to keep on topic because there, there's so many important lessons in in what you're saying for, for anybody who's listening in. And, and uh, you know, I, I had two two things that I, that I heard off of that. Um, the first was sort of learning new skills and dealing with things and doing them yourselves. Like you, you didn't know, you don't know graphic design. You don't know sort of the, you know, the positioning on how to, physically put together, like, you know, okay, I can write a piece. I know how to style. I know, I know, I know how to create a director shoot, but to how to position it on physically on a, on a layout on a magazine. So not, not something mm-hmm. you've done. So talk to us about that experience. Cause that was my first question. And then I have a follow up question based on what you just said, but that alone, like just learning the new skills and not being scared to jump in and, you know, it's fear, it's fear. Like, what if I don't do this properly? What if it takes me longer than I think? Like it's, it's almost, you build a, a huge mountain out of this, out of this mm-hmm. task. 
and it becomes bigger in your head than it actually is. So, okay, so initially when I was thinking of this, of this idea and this concept, I, I was like, I'm not going to have my own website right now. I'm going to use one of those like templates and software that's part of another website and like direct people to them. So it's going to be easy, whatever. And then like two weeks ago, um, and since as we're still working on this and getting content, I was taking my, my inspirational shower, let's call it that way. So I was in the shower. Yeah, Rashi's, and... Rashi's uh, most, most important thoughts happen in the shower. <laughs> it actually does. And I was in the shower and it just hit me. I was like, why the fuck am I going to put my magazine like on another site? I'm going to create my own site and I want people to download the link. And the, and for the first issue is free, by the way, because I want people to get to know it. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. How? No clue. No idea. Um, yes, I know how to use basic Squarespace, but I was just like, yeah, okay, I, I'm, I will like get it done. That was literally my, 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 my concept. And then I reached out to a friend and I was like, hey, can you do a basic landing page for me where I just need these features? And that basic landing page like ended up being like a proper website. Right. Um, we don't have like additional blog posts yet. That may happen in the future. But um, so like that was one bit. And I was very very particular about the vision that I wanted. So even up till we launched, like I was sitting with her on the video call to make sure that the link is not going to a Google Drive, it's not going there. You click on it, you get to download the issue the way it's mm-hmm. supposed to be. Yeah, the, the PDF. Yeah, the the infamous PDF that you heard of in the yeah. past. No, which, but which is really cool, right? Because it, that way it also helps you build a database for subscribers yeah. to your magazine down the road, which yeah. is very, I mean, one of the most important pieces is to build your audience. And, and, and then it gives you the, the users. So like I, cause I, when you sent me the link, I went to it. Um, and it just allows you to, it goes, it goes right to your phone, like it downloads or whether you're on your computer, yeah. like it was just easy. So now I have access to it and I can read it and look at it whenever I want. Right. So it, yeah. it, the publication now that's on my phone. And and that was key for me. So when I thought of the website uh, of my of my own website and having people do that, I wanted it to be easy. I did not want it to go to someone's email inbox and then you download it and all of those things. I just wanted like once you hit hit download, read it right there and there. Because the fact that you're doing that at that moment means you are interested in reading it, right? So um, and since we all have a lot of like we do have a short short attention span, I kind of just wanted to make sure that I've like you've you've captured that moment that feel of like i, I want to read this magazine i i i, I want to know more about it um so that was how the website thing came about and then in terms of doing the layout and stuff oh my god so for the past four days and i haven't done this routine in years and i do not i do not encourage this advice to anybody i started working on it and it and here's the thing I've never done a layout before. I've never like worked. I've I'm not worked on on a magazine to from from this perspective. I've done shoots. I've done I've done those things, but not like laying out the whole magazine and knowing, you know, which which articles to put first. Like like how are you telling the story now? Uh, and it it was, I think I spent like thirty minutes writing out my first layout, like which sections I wanted. Then I went back and I rearranged it and I kept doing that. And then I just started editing and then I started like figuring out how, how to do a layout. And then I would research stuff and then I would go back to it. And then I would start playing with everything. And then I would go back and again, change the layout until it all made sense. So I kind of not slept for the past. No, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Wait, so we're, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to talk to you actually just about that. The concept uh, of the first magazine. And we're back uh, from our break. So we left off on the topic of you building out the concept for the first layout. So when you mm-hmm. first thought about the idea of putting together this magazine, what, was, what to you was the, like, I want this to be the concept. Like, I want, this is what I want the inaugural edition yeah. to look like. Like, what was your vision in your mind? So initially, 
I did know the two photographers that I wanted to be part of my main team, and they are part of it. Um, I did know that I wanted a photo shoot with the face mask because I, I knew that that was going to be like the next big thing. Um, I initially thought my cover would be like a like a like a like a picture from the shoot with the mask, but then somehow as I was building the content, that idea changed into an illustration and a very simple illustration. And the, the, the reason for that being is that, you know, it's a clean slate. So if, if you guys have not seen the magazine yet or, or the front cover of it, it's, it's literally like a, like a white background. And we have a very single, we have a single um, illustration on it. There's no, there's no additional elements to it. There's, there's not a lot of text on it but she's wearing a mask. And I think that on its own just speaks about the current state that we're in and the fact that we all are going through or we have went through kind of like a, like, a, like a reset. So that came into my mind and we got that done. And then in terms of putting the content, um, I knew as a stylist, I knew highlighting stylist was very key because I understand that desire and that feel to be out there and talk about what you're doing. So um, I reached out to a couple of stylists who, one of them I had met in 2018 over Instagram and we kind of lost touch. Uh, and then, and this is where I say like, when you know things are meant to be, it happens. I had, I went on Instagram. I had not even thought about her and her feed like, popped up like like one of her like images was the first thing that popped up when I like opened Instagram and I was like holy shit so I reached out to her and I'm like hey how's it going blah 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 and we had a conversation and I told her and she's like I'd love to be part of this I was like okay so and then and then when she told me her story so um as you guys read the magazine we have an article about a stylist who merges style to help um people suffering from any types of mental illnesses so anxiety depression you know all of those things and um and basically she kind of you know merged style and and health in that sense so when i was hearing about that i was like can we do a profile on you even and i got one of my writers amazing girl jasmine i like i love her i, I would not do this like i would not be able to do this without her I got her to reach out to Yalda and get the profile piece done. So that kind of how the content started taking place. I think first it started with like it, which two photographers I absolutely wanted. I wanted their work in my magazine. Um, then somehow it kind of spiraled into having a style section, but then that style section also became about profiling these stylists because, you know, they are so good at what they do. Um, even, like, like, even for you, like, I know your style and you as a personal stylist. So I was like, there has to be a way where we can start making other people see what I see in you, right? So I was like, do you want to do this? So whatever you sent to us, I was like, okay, this is how this is going to fit. Um, having the French component was, mm. was, was vital to me. Like, when I thought about even doing a magazine, I was like, I want to make it bilingual because at the end of the day, my fashion influence, my way of thinking, um, the eye that people say that I have is heavily influenced by my years in, years in Montreal, right? Um, just just that, that, that city has a very different take on art and fashion. So that had to play a role in all of this. And I think that may be seen in, even in the type of layout and just the type that, the, just the way the magazines um, come together. So for the first issue, we have two articles in French. One is about this amazing model. She's so gorgeous. She's so beautiful. She has written about her journey into the modeling world. So this is to help other aspiring models. So she ended up doing Dior's show in, uh, in uh, Milan. And I was like, oh my God, like I was like so in love with what she was doing. And it kind of just shows that all these things are like possible. And then we have another article in French talking about, uh, talking about a modeling agency in, in Milan as well um, and what the process is. So how, if you're here, you can actually land there. And that's the whole idea of these, of these um, um, articles, right? Like nothing's impossible. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I think you're showing that through just even just doing the magazine. 
Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Sounds so confused. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, one high fashion, and then you're like, yeah, but you also did the same thing. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's interesting because your magazine does touch on it. It does touch on high fashion. It does touch on personal styling. You know, it does touch on the bilingual side. Like, there's, it's all different aspects of the industry. Like, it's not just yeah. focused on high fashion. It's not just focused on, you know, one specific, like, it, 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 it cross, it's cross-sectional. Yeah, I think that's because, I think that kind of reflects on my different sides of myself, I would say. Like, I was, I, I was about to say my many pers- personalities, but then I realized how that may sound. So I'm like, the different you don't, you don't have to say it, You don't have to say it for us to know it. <laughs> ha, 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 very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's just a reflection of like all my like different sides. Like, yes, I do have the the high fashion world that I love and I want to be part of. But then I have my like, you know, like I I like I do personal styling now as well, and I mm-hmm. the joy I get from that is so different than the high I get from doing you know fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, I I love I I love seeing other people shine. Like I just love it. There's just something knowing that someone's in their true element and they're living that moment that just really i i've noticed why I've, I've always been it just makes me so happy so to to try to to bring that in the main scene as well and then hopefully this inspires others like you know life's great so so this actually is the second question i had for you from before the break it's come up again in just your your recent uh part of this conversation you invited other stylists into working with you on this magazine. A lot yeah. of people would fear that issue because you're inviting essentially competition into your realm or your network, right? Because mm-hmm. they, they do, you know, there may be some overlap in the type of work that they do versus what you do, right? So, yeah. so what was the thought process behind that in terms of bringing in essentially a competition in, into your realm of your network and, your, and the work that you're doing? See. The, the way I look at it is that if I'm going to put out a main scene, I cannot view myself as a stylist. I, I need to view myself as, as a leader, right? Um, if, if my goal is to highlight others, then I need to put my ego aside and not fear that they are, that they are competition. So that was the mindset that, that I have to have if I'm going to do something like this. If not, if, if, if I cannot think like that, I cannot have a main scene. I cannot have mm-hmm. anything that is going to be or put me in a in a position to lead or to try and impact or change the environment that I'm in. I should just be a stylist, you know what I mean? And just focus on that mm-hmm. day in and day out, which is what I still love to do. Um, so, so that was one thing that I had to, you know, change. And then the other thing was the reason I did not feel it so much as like, you know, this is like hardcore competition or whatever is because every stylist, every true stylist, we're all different. We all have our own eye. We have our, we have our own way of doing things. And what I can do, for example, let's say you, you can't do, maybe you can do something that I can't do, or <laughs> you could do it better, but you can't do the exact same thing as, as me and vice versa. I cannot do the exact same thing as somebody else. I may be inspired by them, but my own twist will always come. Yes. There are people who will down the, like who, you know, will imitate or try and do it sure. or like, and, and, but that's life. Like if you go by that, then you're not going to also grow. Right. Um, so yeah, so I think I just didn't see it as competition in that sense. I just saw it as, as for what it really was. I'm like, these are amazing. In fact, how can I work with them in, in the future? And, and I have done projects where we are two stylists, you know, doing things. And it's been actually amazing, right? So. Well, I think that you, and you, part of the, the angle of this magazine is to build a, build a community, the Canadian community the talent in, in fashion in Canada and that includes other stylists it's not just designers retailers uh, you know writers it's there's people that are going to be exactly in the space that you're in potentially yeah. your competition and as long as I think you know what you said there it's important as long as everyone does it with no ego and in the 
with a positive mindset to build a community, not to be at each other's throats or not to use this as an opportunity to, you know, manipulate or to cut someone else down. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's going to be, as long as everyone's in there with the mindset, that, Hey, I'm here to add what I, my perspective to help build the community so that people see Canada as a true fashion hub. And that's, yep. you know, you're, you're part of in that, in that process of building that. And I, then I think it would work. It's, and I think part of it is, is as you're talking to different, whether it's stylists, designers, whatever the case is, understanding that their mindset is aligned with your vision. It's not, we're not here to cut each other down. You're not here to, you know, jump into my space. I'm not here to jump into your space. If there's a, a way for us to collaborate, obviously. But the whole thing is for us to grow together and build the community. Because if the Canadian fashion community grows as a whole and gets noticed outside of Canada more, then it's more work for all of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. And, and you, you, like, like you hit it, the idea is there's no ego in this. You know what I mean? Um, when I, when I was doing this, not once I was like, Oh my God, Sebastian's a better stylist than me. Like I want to this and that. No. In fact, I was like, I really want him to be part of it. I hope he like like, I hope he believes in the vision. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he did. And he's part of the main scene. And I'm so grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I was like, listen, for your trend, uh, for your trend report, I rather use your own photos versus, you know, sourcing them out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he was like, really? I was like, yeah, this is about you. It's not about me here. It's, it's about you. And that's, and that's the biggest thing about this magazine. This magazine is honestly not about me. Mm-hmm. It's got nothing to do what, what it's got nothing to do in, in that sense about me. It's really about everybody else. It's, it's about the makeup artist who wrote about, you know, makeup trends. It's about her. It's about, um, skincare by this amazing, um line that's in london ontario for example right it's 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 about them so it's it's really focused on everybody else but me Mm -hmm. that's the way i see it as so how did you how did you go about building your core team like i know there's you know there's writers you'll reach out to every so often there's designers you reach out to every so often but i'm assuming you're in like you want to have a core team that's going to be part of every every um, yeah every issue every issue and you want to make sure that obviously they're aligned with your values and what your, your vision is. So how did you go about building that and then finding the right people for that? Um, I, I, so one of the main, main writers, Jasmine, as I, I think I mentioned her before, I actually had put out a post on Instagram that I'm looking for writers and this other jewelry company that had done my like blue uh, bracelets she saw my post, sent it to a friend that she knows who happens to be Jasmine. I got on a call with her. I explained her and she's like, and, and this is what hit home for her. She's like, I love the fact that you're South Asian, but mm. you're not doing a South Asian magazine. You're not doing a wedding magazine. Yeah. You are focusing on the mainstream world. And she's like, I want to be part of that because mm-hmm. we do get stereotyped that, you know, as South Asians, we end up, you know, just doing more of what, of, of our own culture. Yeah, what everybody totally else fine. is kind of doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's totally fine. I have nothing against that, but just I've, again, because of my upbringing in uh, Montreal and, you know, not really being part of the, of the brown world, I always fell in love with the, with the whole, like, mainstream Side. Yeah, and, right. I, and I don't, I don't get the sense that your fear is is, is to work with South Asian community uh, leaders. It's more that if you're going to work with them, you want them to understand the vision that this is to build the exposure into the mainstream market, even if it's for a South exactly. Asian designer or South Asian, you know, stylist or artist or whatever you yeah. want to call it. So, 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 when or I any, any, that, sorry, or any, any ethnic background for that, for that matter. Any, and that's the beauty of this magazine. It's so diverse Mm -hmm. that we literally have, and like every writer in this magazine, it's a voice from a different community. Very different. And I think that's one of those, and that just kind of happened. But I think that happens because I've always been like that in in any project I've done, in any fashion show that I've done. um, I don't think diversity has ever been an issue. I think that has just naturally been, I think the type of people that that I attract and they just kind of flow with everything. So that's how Jasmine came on board and thank God that she knows that she was doing all the edits at most of them because my eyes were bleeding at some point. So she was like taking over. 
um so like that's how I like got her and then um Naomi is from Montreal she was the first model that I shot with when I got back into styling and got published and I explained her and she's like I want to be part of this and she's a busy girl like she is Mm -hmm. busy if we think I'm busy she's busy um and she was like ideas after ideas and she said okay so then and then even during our like conversation she said okay and then for the next issue we'll do this we'll do that and I was like okay I guess the team's coming together um so right Which is now so nice. it's, so, it's so nice to see that they they want to be part of the long-term vision yeah. um so as of now those two in terms of like the main main were there and a lot of people who contributed their like articles um said that they want to be part of, they want to continue being part of it um so i feel i already have a bunch of contributors but then i'm going to still like reach out to others so that there's so much to do mm-hmm. so much to get involved in um hint hint you could be back in the next magazine you know hint hint as the you know i'm always there whenever you need it so that's not a question <laughs> <laughs> like you're part of the permanent team you know <laughs> i'm excited but I, i appreciate that I wasn't sure after I wrote that I'm like, well, maybe she won't like this. Maybe she will. I'm not sure. I wanted to keep it very basic, my piece. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was it, it was exactly what we needed. Like it worked, it flows really well with the main scene. So I was happy that you wrote that. And I was like, I'll just tell him at some point he's doing the next issue. So, you know, I'll just drop that bomb. <laughs> I don't yeah, want to ask I, him, I'll just tell him. <laughs> no, there, there's no bomb. I'm all, I'm always uh, able to help in any way I can. Thank you. Um so that's I think how in terms of the core mm-hmm. writers came about. Um you know just just like how you like how you said even for the website and stuff it was it was one of my um friends who were just like anything for you this this I I want to do this for you. Mm-hmm. Um and you know and then it then we had our conversation and like any other major updates she's like don't worry I'll take care of it even though technically I can do it. I I do know how I do I do have like the login and I know how to go back into Squarespace and fix sure, my sure. website if I need to. Um but just to even hear that right like don't worry that like, I'm there I'll do it. That's t- that's how you kind of start building your team. I think a lot of it depends on what you've done in the past and your relationship with people. Um I wasn't expecting right away everybody to come back for the second issue. um but i think the response that i've already gotten with the first issue so i sent out an email on sunday night to the internal team that everything's live and you know monday I, like so yesterday i planned to like push it out um sunday night itself i started seeing downloads from people that i didn't recognize and a lot of instagram stories and a lot of messages were pouring in and i was like oh i've not even launched this officially yet um i sent it to like you know people that like like that like e- even we know and they were just like i'm so proud of you and i was like oh do you want to read the magazine first just make sure everything's okay <laughs> like oh, I, didn't, um, i didn't i didn't i didn't i didn't realize it was i didn't realize it was, it was public knowledge yet, so i didn't i didn't send that out anyway <laughs> <laughs> no like i like okay so so i was going to like you know message everybody in in the next couple of yeah, days so and just yeah, be yeah, like yeah. right so after that was just like okay I'll I like like yesterday I'm, I was like it's going on story it's going on the account I'm putting it on my profile and start easing into it and then I was going to like send that message to like all you guys and a bunch of my friends hey guys you know like so what I've done feel free to share and pass it around of course, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um no yeah, exactly I was I'm, I'm waiting for that go ahead <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just I just that that this point just go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm I'm going to wait for the official, the official launch and then I'll I'll ease it off. Yes. Yes. So um yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, I'm just saying that's pretty much how I guess the teams coming coming together, you know. So. so so you talked a bit about sort of the collaborations and how they're helping you to market it out and get the get the word out on on the issue and and sort of the the launch of the magazine. How, like how are you planning to bring it out to the to the mainstream and get we get the awareness and word about word out about the magazine um so part of it is all the contributors they know like they're very excited and then the people that they've interviewed and then they're sharing it as well um one would be my like personal reach out to people that i know um communities that i'm part with like like i'm part of just like you know like just like 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 put it out there and then i actually do have like an email list 
uh, of people that I have a, that I I've, I've built a network in you know the past couple of years, and small just one. trying to blast it out. It was just like a tiny network. It was yeah. like a small network of people, and <laughs> and just like blast it out to them. Um, yeah, and then and then in what happens is that as we start working on the second issue. Like there's been two brands that we've already reached out to. We sent the first issue to them. So that's right. already them tapping into their network like of that. Course, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, um, yeah, So that's essentially how I'm starting. Um, I definitely will be highlighting everybody on social, like through their headshots and things like that. There's some videos pouring in which need to be edited. And then we're going to talk about the main scene too. I think people love hearing the, again, it goes back to the why you're doing certain things mm-hmm. and why and people are scenes. getting involved. And it goes back to the why you're getting involved in this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's easy to say, oh, I'm part of this. Cool. Like, why, people don't yeah, want to hear that. Why? Yeah. Yeah, why, so. why, are, why do you want to be a part of something like this? Yes. So, so what kind of, uh, I don't know if you're allowed to share this yet, what kind of brands can we look forward to hearing from or about in the upcoming issues? Yeah, I, 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 I can share that. Yeah. Okay. That defeats the purpose <laughs> of having the second issue. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Not yet. Not yet. I will share it in due time. Keep following okay, so, us. That's how you'll know. <laughs> so let me, okay, let me, let me rephrase my question. What is the long-term vision or goal of, of the walkthrough? Uh, the long term, so the long, long, long term vision, like I would love in, you know, the next two, three years for the magazine to be picked up by a publishing house. And, you know, we are in like all the stores and we have a proper subscription model. And not only are we highlighting and and inspiring the Canadian talent, but our magazine is also out in the States. It's like all over North America, right? Like. I, 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 I have the same vision that Vogue had for Vogue. Like that's the vision I have for the war through. Like I want it to, I want that 13 or 14 year old girl to save her. Well, I, would, I, I won't say save her allowance now because they're, they're, they're probably not doing that. But I want <laughs> them to have that excitement of going and, you know, waiting for that issue, issue to like come out and trying the hair trends and being like, I want that. Like I mm. want to be like this person, you know? Um, so that's definitely the long-term goal. And long-term, I would love it to be a published um, uh, publication. But for now, it's going to be online. You know, so. So it is the long-term is to is to have a, a physical publication, the paperback. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there is something there. I mean, there there is a way. I would, I have already planned how I want to do it for the next year. It might be like special edition issues that would go into print. Um, a lot of them also depend on the readership and the feedback mm-hmm. that we're getting and what people want to, you know, hear and see and all of those things. Yeah, tweaks and those sort of um, things, of course. And it's a learning curve. See, that's that's also one of the one of the approaches I took with this was it, this is not a money making business. You know what I mean? Um, Facebook I said that when they first started too. Well, then I'm in I'm in the company. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook was just a, a social network. It wasn't meant to generate ad revenue, which is its biggest source of revenue. So, you just never know. exactly, just never know. But but truly, like you know, as I was doing this, I didn't even like I didn't even tell my like I wasn't like Rashi. This is the money that you've like invested. You know, this is your three month plan. You should get this by then. Or you know, I was just like, I'm putting this in. But my goal is to make sure that this is like I was more concerned about how my main scene's gonna look. You know what I mean? Right. The people that are part of it. Um, how can I make it better and better? And also just learning. Like, like I didn't know a layout would take me that long, and I would not sleep for four days. And as you once said it in in our text, that's healthy and attractive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You described the situation to me, and I'm like, oh, good lord. I'm so happy you don't get to see this right now. I know, right? <laughs> and you'd be like, nobody has to see that. Yeah, nobody, nobody, um, nobody should see that. <laughs> but, but that's nor should they have to live. Nor should they have to live through the description of it. It's not that bad, okay? <laughs> no, no, no. Give me some nightmares. <laughs> At least you slept. I did not sleep during that time either. Fair enough. So. It was a very, real, it was very real interrupted disaster. sleep, but it, it was what it was. Yeah, it's yeah, it 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 was that. But um, 
yeah, that was, that's my, that's still my mindset. You know what I mean? Like right now my focus is getting this out there to as many people as possible, having a great second issue, hoping I did not make any mistakes in the first issue. Like that was my biggest fear that I, I, I wanted to make sure that I had, I had credited people properly and I had mm-hmm. aligned everything properly. Um, so the night before we launched, so Saturday night, I slept at 4.30. So I wanted to make sure like everything was proper. The editor's note was something I didn't know how to write because I was like, what am I going to say? So I wrote something. I woke up at 8.30, 9 o'clock. Bef- and I had plans with my sister. So before I met her, I redid that entire page. <laughs> <laughs> And I double checked everything to make sure like I didn't miss anything. And, and then I sent it. Yeah. And yeah. I was just hoping and praying that I did not fuck up anywhere because that's the one thing that we all don't realize that we sometimes can look over the same thing, you know, over and over again. Right. And you sometimes will miss, especially your first issue. There have been stories that, you know, oh, we forgot this. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is not probably we'll know for next time. I didn't want to have that. I wanted to be like my first issue is perfect. Yeah. That's the standard. This is what you guys are gonna get, and I want to raise that. So. And you and you build it, and you build and learn from there. So th- this is, I mean, so far it's been an exciting journey, and I think that you know we're, we're looking forward to success on this for you. I know from from our elevated elevated grape side and my side. And I'm gonna, you know, I always like to leave the last words to you, so I'll, we'll sort of end off with that. But what are your sort of thoughts in this moment, being the launch week? What what is what are you excited about? What are you scared of? And what do you want to see happen this week as the magazine gets launched? So, first of all, I will say it has been a little scary being on the other side. Like, I'm used to now, like, asking people questions, not getting asked questions by me, <laughs> not interviewed by me. <laughs> so, <laughs> a little scarier. Um, but I can now look back at my life and be like, I got interviewed by the famous host, uh, Sethi. So right. I'm happy about that. I will, I will. I was talking about the magazine. I was, I was, like, I was talking about our conversation. Oh, I know, but still, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take this as part of that too. Um, I'm scared. Like I'm scared and nervous because, you know, you're, you're putting out a very different type of energy content and flow mm-hmm. and not everybody may see it your way there Mm -hmm. will be people who are gonna like dismiss it as oh it's just one of her other things and you know Mm -hmm. all of those things um i think my biggest fear is that it may not be well well received my fear isn't that it won't be a popular magazine my fear at this moment that even with the people that i'm sharing it with won't be well well received you know they might find a lot flaws they may think like she has no clue what she's doing type of thing um I think that would be my like biggest fear. This week just look out for, for like tags and promos and just pushing the main scene out and having people's articles out there, their photo shoots out there and having them shine. It's it's their week. So what uh what are the socials and the websites and that sort of thing so that people that are listening, if they're too lazy to go in the description and read it, <laughs> where can they find it? <laughs> Uh, the website is the walkthroughmagazine.com. Okay. I we will put that in our description. Yeah. Um, the, I don't. I I just have an Instagram I'm building. I'm not on Facebook yet with the magazine. Uh, our Instagram is the walkthrough mag. So the walkthrough mag M A G. Okay, yeah. perfect. So that's where they can find it. Well, Rashi. From our side, from my side, all the success to you. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. It's been, a, it's been a long dream. So congratulations on step one of, of fulfilling that dream. Thank you very much. I'm still grinning like a 12-year-old. but And you probably you know. will be for the entire year with that project. <laughs> I still have butterflies in, in my stomach, but it is, it is what it is. It's, holy shit, it's, it's actually happening. It's actually happening. Holy so, shit. Wow. For listeners, definitely check that out. It's the, <laughs> the walkthrough mag on Instagram and it's the walkthrough magazine.com, correct? Yes. The walkthrough magazine.com is the website where you can subscribe and download your P- your own PDF version. And then you'll get <laughs> notified of the updated editions. And, yes, absolutely. Uh, and I gotta put a little just a shameless self plug, but check out my article. It's about it's about wardrobe redesign and the steps to doing that. So 
Hopefully it's a it. very it's a very good good article, guys. Definitely check it out. Yeah. All right. So thanks so much for listening, and we will catch you next week. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching that podcast or that video. Um, if you like what you hear and you want to hear more of us and see some of our behind the scenes stuff, subscribe below. Yes, hit that little red like you know button thingy that's over there and hit subscribe and keep following us for a lot more cool fun stuff. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you soon.